Good evening. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the 29th September 2014 Town of Hampton Board of Selecting Meeting. For one public comment, those seeking public comment, please, the podium. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Mike Pierce, 16 Heaven Avenue. And about three or, three or so weeks ago, I requested a copy of your budget that you are working on. <coughs> and uh, anyway, I want to get to the other point first. I think about the same time, about three weeks ago, somebody, I think it was Mary Louise, I'm not sure, requested to having the budget put on the town website so the legislative body, who are the voters, can actually watch it as you go through it. And I don't know why it's still not there. I think it's a very puzzling question. I heard some uh, comments made about it, but I don't, can't see any reason myself why it's not there. Because after all, the voters are the ones that are going to vote it up or down. And you would like for the voters to be informed, I would think, and follow the discussion and debate you folks have as you go along. So I think it should be on the town website. And I would like to know why it isn't. And then the second point I'd like to bring up is <clears throat> I asked for the budget myself. Initially, I was told I couldn't have it. And I said, well, I will ask for it under 91A. And I did. Five days later, which is the legal limit, I was told it would have to be either on CD or printed, not a simple email. It could take a couple of clicks and be gone, not take up much time of it. Uh, for anybody to have to work on it. In other words, they could just take the file off the computer and attach it to an email and away it goes. Putting on the CD is about the same length of time, probably four or five minutes on a slow day, and a CD doesn't even cost 50 cents on a, on a really expensive day. So putting that all together, five <coughs> days later and $25 later, I got it on a CD. And if I remember correctly, 91A says cost. What it cost to produce the item. There's absolutely <coughs> no way in this God's world that it could cost $25 to produce that file I asked for. That is outrageous, okay? Because I think it's outrageous and I feel very strongly about it because I have my own copy now. I am willing to share that with all the taxpayers and the legislative body in Hampton who would like to see it, because it seems like it's difficult for them to get it any other way. So I'm very concerned about that when it comes to being an open and honest government. That's really all I have to say. Thank you, and have a nice evening. Thank you, sir. Further public comment? Good evening, everybody. I'm Jay Diener. I'm here representing the Hampton Conservation Commission and the Seabrook Hampton, Hampton Estuary Alliance. And I'm here to let everybody know that our fourth in a series of workshops dealing with sea level rise, um, flooding, and storm surges is coming up on October 8th. It's going to be held at the Seabrook Public Library at 25 Liberty Lane starting at 6 p.m. and will go to about 7.30 p.m. We've dealt with a variety of issues in these workshops, dealing with uh, salt marsh migration, with legislative issues, regulatory issues. This particular workshop is going to deal with something that I think is very important to the town and to the residents of the town, which is the community rating system. That's a FEMA process through which a town can, through actions it takes to help to um, reduce the impacts of sea level rise and storm surge, lower the flood insurance rates for town property owners. So again, I think that's a topic that should be very important to the townspeople and to the town government. Um, we have a member of the state, uh, a state representative from FEMA or with FEMA who works with FEMA coming to this meeting, Jennifer Gilbert. Um, she can answer your questions. She can provide a variety of information. So I really encourage everybody to come to this workshop. Again, this is on October 8th at the Seabrook Public Library. 
We'll also be talking about an audit of munis municipal regulations in Seabrook, Hampton, and Hampton Falls. And this is going to be conducted by the Rockingham Planning Commission. And in this instance, what we're going to be doing is looking at the master plan, looking at our town's ordinances to see where there are areas where the towns can work collaboratively to strengthen our ordinances and to strengthen our master plans so that we're in a better position to deal with these issues when they come. Again, I think this is going to be a very informative, a very helpful uh, workshop, and I encourage everybody to come. Once again, October 8th, 6 to 7.30 at the Seabrook Public Library. If you're looking for more information, please go to the Conservation Commission page on the town's website. And I hope I'll see some selectmen there as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Further public comment? Seeing none. Roman two announcements and community calendar. Selectman Wilson. Uh, I had a great number of complaints over this past weekend due to the good weather with the parking situation at North Beach. Uh, debris and garbage and empty beer bottles and cans thrown all over the road, parking in inappropriate areas and residential areas. And I have assured the residents in that area that we really will be settling down to do some work on the situation in their area too, as well as Boar's Head and the numbered streets. And we will be posting um, meetings and information meetings where the residents can come and talk to us. Uh, they're uh, really a lot of upset people and messy tourists. Thank you, ma'am. Sir? Um, no, thank you. Don't have anything tonight? Thank you. Uh, yeah, as I say, it was a great weekend there. It was great weather, summertime. And I'm going to disagree a little bit with Mary Louise because I live down at North Beach. I live right on the corner of uh, High Street and uh, Ocean Boulevard. And it was, wasn't messy there. The people were pretty, people were pretty nice. And, I, you know, I think in the work area, people are being really conscientious of what's going on there and using the barricades <laughs> the police put up. And I think it was a good cooperation between the police and the company and everybody to get things really safe down there. And if, as long as everybody follows what's happening and follows the rules, I think it'll be nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Huckleberry and Wild Rose, just north of you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to welcome back Selectman Griffin. It's good to see him on board. Um, Mr. Welch, of course, is back from vacation. Welcome back. We've yes, got sir. our full force. And uh, kudos to Chief Sullivan for uh, some magnificent leadership during uh, your absence, Fred. Uh, Roman 3, consent agenda seeing none. Uh, we're moving on to appointments. Roman 4, Chief Sullivan, Police Department, 2015 budget. Sir. <laughs> Deputy Chief Sawyer. Good evening, Mr. Chair and lady and gentlemen. Mr. Wattle, just one thing. We didn't put the barriers up. We just okay. gave our thoughts on where they should go, and those folks did, did it for us. Good thoughts. <coughs> he just looks ferocious. Well, good evening. Uh, we're here to talk about the 2015 budget. Um, I know the board has been um, addressing this rather quickly, so I, I take a broad view and then throw it to the board for any questions specifically you may have. In general, um, we proposed a number of things to, to the town manager uh, based on some of the direction from the board to put in uh, whatever those items we felt were important. We did that, uh, met with Fred, because as you might imagine, many of those things were, were um, you know, outside of trying to keep a very tight, restricted budget. So we worked on bringing that through. That What we left in the budget here, you'll see a couple tremendous things we need to have addressed pretty quickly. One of them is an increase in training. Uh, we've increased our training, which is always important. But as we've had staff turnover, we'll have new folks come on board. We're going to have to continue to invest in their training to move them along and progress them in the career. You'll see that. And there's also we, we have to continually uh, challenge ourselves to keep our officers um, engaged and to give them the training they need to improve in their careers. Another major ticket item you'll see in there is a recommendation uh, that we proceed. We have a number of cameras that are now beginning to fail. We're in the building now 10, 11 years. A lot of that technology that was initially put in there are beginning to fail. Uh, we have several cameras in critical areas that are not functional and unable to uh, record to a DVR currently. So we've proposed uh, a process by which we'll go to, to bid on a, um, basically an upgrade on our entire system um, and enter into what we anticipate will be a, a long-term agreement to try and uh, address that issue. So those are the big substantial issues. There are obviously the wage issues in there, the wage increases that are required by CBA that you'll see in there. 
Um, and uh, we continue with our vehicle replacement program. Uh, that continues to be an impact on our budget because, as you recall, we're, we're changing over from the Crown VIX to the utilities now, uh, which we're seeing good success in. With that said, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back to the board. Are there any specific questions we can answer for you? Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. Um, electricity, your utility bills, especially after the little article in the paper about the uh, individual bills going up $42 a month or something like that. Have right. you guys any calculations on what's going to impact you? Yeah, currently, I mean, those those changes as they come after we submit our budgets or periods that we'll have to take a look at that and fuel costs. But uh, for us, we seem to be running within our range at the moment. I have one other, because I'm, we're going to be talking, I think. I need a butler. We're going to be talking, I think, about the... Um, proposed warrant articles and there is a proposed article here that the manager has given us shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of two hundred and fifty fifteen thousand and fifty six thousand and fifty six dollars for the purpose of hiring three full-time new full-time police officers and restore <coughs> the position of police lieutenant within the fire department I will say that I do not want to see that as a special money article. I want that in the budget. If in our opinion this needs to be done for this department, and I think with the extreme difficulty we're having hiring, hiring special officers and then we're having a bleeding of personnel in the, in the department, uh, I am in favor of putting this in, and I can't tell you where, uh, Christy can tell us, but I think she has a breakdown. Yes, she does. She has a breakdown here by department. I will so move that we add to the Hampton Police budget the total sum of $215,056 for the purpose of hiring three new, new full-time police officers and restoring the position of lieutenant. Now, as of what date, Chief? This will fund what, like April 1st, May 1st? The initial proposal, the numbers you're looking at, mm -hmm. had us looking towards doing that in, in an April-May time frame okay. uh, after Before the vote was something. done in a period of time to begin to put that in. There was that proposal that was taken out of mind as well as that, as you recall, our discussions with the specialists, that Class A and Class mm -hmm. B. We have funding in there for, for Class A, but not for a secondary class. That was also something that was pulled out to be considered as a warrant article. I think that we need to man up. Okay, okay, pardon me, point of, point of order, there's a motion. Is your motion complete? Oh, oh yes. Have I a second? Is there a second for the motion? Is there a second for the motion? Seeing no second. Do you have any further questions, Selectman Wilson? Well, you're going to have to do something sooner or later, and it's a dreadful disservice to the public not to fund this department to operate the way it should. I have no problem with your budget, Chief. Thank you, ma'am. Selectman Griffin, please. Yeah, I have no problem with your budget either. And I think that this year, even though many other years uh, people have looked like, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could include this on the but in the bu budget? I think this is a year that um, we just have to wait and see. It's going to be an active year, and I think the public may want to have a say on it. We understand. Thank you. Selectman Bridal. No, I think the budget's excellent. I think uh, we've had a lot of things come on board this year with the with the two new fire stations and stuff and we have to look everywhere we can to do it. It's not that I'm opposed to your manpower. I got you guys do a great job every year, but we gotta make sure we follow the mind too. Understood. Suck model. Yeah. Fine. I, I just on the on the training there that went up so much, can you just yeah, what we have been sure. What we've Please. primarily in there, that's in the patrol training area. That's the basically our big one that counts everything. And what we have found over the years, training is very expensive. It's a generally on an overtime basis because we've got to bring people in. And what we've found in that number is we're really dealing with um, our core critical training functions, our use of force things. Our, and what we find is we're not moving forward. We're not moving to challenge us more than we need to do. So that's the number we're looking at. We're looking to bring on an additional. For example, uh, a number of years ago, um, we hadn't done training for part-time officers mm -hmm. who would drive cruisers. At some point, they had never received training. Uh, that's been addressed both at the state level, and we have to continue to do that. The way you deal with that driving is you've got to put people in the car. There's only so much we can do to, to say, here are the rules of the road, here are your responsibilities driving an emergency vehicle. We need to get out and actually drive uh, those courses, EVOC courses again. Things like that that have fallen off, 
have become, we have to do our use of force, we have to do our firearms, we have to use those types of trainings, eat up the most of our budget. We need to tr continue to challenge, and those are high-risk areas that we feel we need to continue to work on. Okay, and this is something that if you didn't do it, and then there was a problem and you had a lawsuit, it would cost a mm -hmm. lot more in the end, wouldn't it? It, it could very much. Yeah. yeah, it could very well. well. And again, from the very beginning of my tenure as chief, training is a vital, important part, I believe, of an agency. It is an, a great risk management tool, um, and we've advocated to do that. We need to continue to challenge our folks. And again, we're putting a lot of younger folks on, and some of those folks are now reaching their, you know, two, three, four, five year. It's time for them to go from a beginning officer to an intermediate to an advanced. And there are specific classes and training that's important to bring their skills forward. That's all addressed in, in, not all, but it's it's beginning to be addressed in that number. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you. Uh, Would you like uh, another question? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I don't want to see government by warrant article. I don't want to see the public in this town being pressed to make a decision. We are supposed to be the executive board. We are supposed to understand what's going on. We are supposed to understand the needs of these departments. And we are supposed to understand particularly public safety. And I will say to you that I will, I will not support having an increase in personnel for this department on a warrant article. Not at all. Point of, point of order, Slick and Wolsey, that, that comes up later on in the agenda, and uh, there may right. not be, uh, we, you, you may be joined by a unanimous vote that there is no support for that method of adding forces. Gentlemen, yeah. thank you very much. Mr. Good Chairman, night. one other area is the <laughs> Health and Human Services Animal Control Budget Animal. that we also do. Yeah. Please. That begins on page 121 in your budget book, I believe. Thank you. What you'll see in this budget is essentially a, a uh, repeat. We did add um, that we need to address a vehicle issue there. Um, unfortunately, under the cuts, that's been removed. So we're at the point where uh, this is the wage adjustments and um, continuing with the great service that Mr. McKinnon does for the community. Thank you. Questions? Select Mulsey. No question. Nobody does it like Peter McKinnon, I'll tell you. Selectman Griffin. He's a great guy. I'm he sure. certainly is. <laughs> Thank you. Selectman Woodell. Thank you. Gentlemen, anything else for your brief tonight? No, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Well done. Roman 4, 2, Brian McCain, Channel 22, Alpha New Equipment, Bravo, refurbished old Ultra Nexus. Gentlemen. Okay. We're here to talk about... Uh, the sound problem we had. I think you all got the letter that we sent out uh, explaining what we think happened and what Access AV thinks happened. So what we had come up with is to basically uh, replace everything because it's everything in there is at least 15 years old. Like we did the um, switchers and um, all that. So. Uh, I gave you a, um, a list of uh, the bids, the reasons why for the, uh, this is just, I'm talking just about the uh, audio right now. And to replace just the audio equipment would be $6,230.42. $6, and that would include uh, three mixers, Ten table mic microphones, four ceiling microphones, and uh, the necessary cable. The other equipment on here is is uh, to basically make sure we don't go down again, or we could, if we do, we could uh, get back up in I would say an hour or so if somebody's here to do it. And uh, it's basically redundancy. Uh, that would include a, um, a um, well, the, uh, we have a data, we have the data video mobile station. That's the most expensive at uh, $6,200. And what that would do, that would cover if our switcher went down. If that went down, this would flip up in its place, 
uh, and could be rehooked up in probably an hour or so. And it also would take, we have an anycast that we do the uh, town meeting with and the budget committee outside meeting with and the school board, uh, their deliberative session and actually SAU 21 when we do that. Uh, and it would cover that too. And it also could be used at the fire station uh, if and when we get that up and running as, uh, as far as the fire station down at the beach for doing uh, the precinct meetings. The other equipment is basically just to um, uh, have on hand in case we lost the um, the e ESE audio dis distribution amp. That's what killed everything. Uh, and we would get another one of those and have it on the shelf because if it happened once, it could happen again. We don't know how it happened. It could have been a surge. Um, and also have another TV in, in back because that's all those monitors are. That main monitor is just the TV, so have another one of those in, on hand. <coughs> and all that along with the... Um, along with the audio. The lowest bid comes out to 13,800 or 381.48. There's a couple other, th and then there's a couple other uh, things we're looking at. We need a, we need a, um, but we haven't got the bid in. We didn't get the bid until late Friday, so I couldn't give it to you in the, in the pack. It was a, uh, a, ult a new Ultra Nexus for SAU 13 because we're going to have the other one refurbished. That's the uh, that's B, and use that as a backup for both. And that's in. Um, but I I'll have to um, get that to you at, at next week or the week after. Thank you, Mr. Buckett. Um, we have a lot of single point of failure is where if we lose one piece of equipment, we are going to lose everything. And I gave you a diagram on that letter. It's an attachment at showing how basically the signal travels through 22 to get to the street. Now, doing all this, we could lose equipment in Iraq and there's no way to get over that because um, Comcast would have to come out and fix that. That would be at least a couple of day project just getting there. But anything in-house that we're coming in for this list, we can do within an hour, do it quickly, have the parts on hand. That's what killed us. We didn't have parts on hand. And we have, we have an aging infrastructure back there. <coughs> We've been getting it as we go forward, everything that we can. But just having a few parts would make life much easier. Thank you, sir. Selectman Woolsey, questions? Yeah, this goes back to September 1996. So I imagine you still... Yeah, it's the same equipment as far as I know. I can't make heads or tails out of the parts you need, but if you need them, do it. I, I believe we need the audio. You have yes. to keep it running. Right. And every, every piece back there that's running now, every one of the uh, mixers, there's something wrong with each one. We've got two, we've got three making two work because the other one has no output and and then uh, we can get those rebuilt and have them as spares. You got to do it, you got to do it. Slipping Griffin. You know, I'm, I happen to be, I was surprised when it first happened and I thought, <coughs> oh God, this isn't good. No, we were very surprised <clears throat> too. But um, I have a lot of confidence in the way you take care of everything in there and if uh, you can, like Paul said, make us feel that this will take care of almost everything. I'm all for it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, you, you do a great job at band-aids. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, great, yeah, I've got a... You do a great job at that, but for too long we haven't put any money back into the system. Right. And, and, and I agree. It's showing now. Yeah, I'm too I, I think I'm too conservative is what it is, you know. Um, and I won't disagree with you on that. Yeah. It's... Uh, uh, we, we, have to, we haven't spent any money in there in a long time. It's very important that station stays up and running at all times right. yes. for, for, for everything in town. And, and I know you guys have tried Yeoman's job at trying to make sure that that happens. And if we need to spend money on it, we need to spend money on it. It's, that's what people pay their cable when they pay their Comcast. Yeah. And they pay that extra whatever the fee is. Mm -hmm. They pay that so they can have that service. Mm -hmm. right? And we need to make sure that we 
onto that and get the service done. So I got no problem with you. Thank you, sir. Select Modell. I agree, and, and people just need to know that the money comes out of the fund you have, right? Right. It comes out of the out of the uh, franchise fees. Right. Yeah. So it's not a tax. It's not taxpayer now. Right. Thank. You. And and do you have any plans on coming up with a, like a five-year plan or something? You know, replacing. Yeah, we, we are going to do that. And also, uh, that reminds me, I talked to Access AV on a uh, permit, <coughs> preventive maintenance program. Uh, they can come down every year and go through everything, all the wires, all the systems, and make sure that they're good. I think it's around $980. She said it, that's the highest it would be. It could be less, depending if they have to do any, mm -hmm. any work. So mm -hmm. i got to get that in writing, too. Okay, and so. you guys do a great job. So. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Do we need a motion on this? Too? Uh -huh. Yeah. We need a motion. A motion I'll make the motion to. Okay. I'll second it. And I, I want. To okay. Do that. I want please, to Paul. Please sit back down. <laughs> I, I haven't heard a specific. I haven't heard a specific request request from you for the exact um, figure, guys. The, the exact. Let, may, may I just have the floor? So just, just. Got now. Yeah. Exact figure. I would go with this figure here. For yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exact is. Okay. Thirteen thousand three hundred eighty-one forty-eight. Okay. I will make that motion. And what is that for? That is for everything on the list there. That is for the sound system and then all the all the other equipment that would uh, back up what we have in there. Okay. Including. There's been a motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Mm -hmm. Those in favor. Unanimous. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Don't leave without the money, see? That's the lesson. Roman four appointments. Number three, Attorney Stephen Roberts, Alpha repairs to the seawall at 1042 Ocean Boulevard. Gentlemen, please. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Larry Gormley. I'm here on behalf of my partner, Stephen Roberts, in the firm of Hobo Phoenix. Gormley and Roberts with me is Mark Gasick. Uh, also with us tonight are uh, Stephen Ricker of Sandpiper Environmental and Duncan Moore, who is a uh, PE, who's also worked on this project. Uh, we are here um, this time regarding the seawall. You, you had originally approved. Would you like those gentlemen to sit at the table? Um, ultimately, Mr. Chairman, I'm, they're here in case you have technical questions. Um, I, frankly, I'm hoping you don't, but Thank they, you, sir. I, I have them available in case. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> this was originally approved, I believe, in April of 2013. Um, the uh, architect provided the builder with a site plan that did not contain stair details. As a result, the stairs were installed on an angle instead of perpendicular as they were originally approved. That has set off a round of visits to various boards. We're here now a year later, having been to each board at least twice, I believe. <clears throat> um, the, it, it became very apparent that the town felt that uh, Mr. Gasek had conducted himself as though he was above, above the rules, that he was going to do what he wanted regardless. Um, that simply is not the case. It was a simple miscommunication between architect and um, contractor who sensibly thought that the straight stairs did not uh, provide an adequate barrier to the water, which would shoot the water, C-H-U-T-E, the water, mm -hmm. onto the property instead of blocking it. So he did that. We, uh, Mr. Gasek saw, obviously, did not come to any board because the physical dimensions of the wall did not change. There was no more intrusion on town property. It was not higher, wider, deeper than it had been, uh, than it had been approved. Um, however, once we did get back to the Conservation Commission, it was quite evident that people thought that this was a very serious thing. Um, and that was made eminently clear to us. Um, as a result, as I've said, we, we've been through this circle a couple of times now. Most recently, we went to the uh, Conservation Commission uh, last October. Um, in October, the Conservation Commission recommended against approving the seawall uh, to the Planning Board. The Planning Board, aware of that <coughs> suggestion, nonetheless heard the technical details of the wall 
and approved it. They said, fine, this as-built is acceptable to us. We are now informed that the select board has told, uh, told us that, or has, has articulated that they don't want what the planning board has approved and what has been built. Instead, they want us to rip it out and put in what was originally approved. Uh, we can appreciate the fact that the town has a great interest in people uh, abiding by its regulations and building as approved. And we have paid a fairly stiff price. Mr. Gasick has paid a stiff financial price for that deviation. Um, as we are here a year later, having paid lawyers and other professionals a great deal of money to deal with this. Um, so any suggestion that he is getting away with something or that there is a risk of a precedent being set, uh, I think is erroneous. The only precedent that has been set here is that if you deviate from the approved plans, you are going to have a very difficult time with the town of Hampton. We understand that. However, we suggest that requ requiring us to rip out what we've already built and put in another wall with a different stairway obtains the town nothing. It simply costs Mr. Gasek tens of thousands of dollars to no one's benefit. So we suggest and request that this board, at least as to the technical aspects of the, of the wall, particularly the, the design of the stairway, the angle of the stairway, abide by the planning board, the, the, the group most technically or charged with the technical analysis of things such as this, and with that technical approval, give us the approval to do the work that uh, is necessary to finish this. And as I said to Mr. Bean's um, inquiry at the outset, I, we have the professionals here. If, if you have any technical questions, we're happy to answer them. I don't think anyone takes issue with the technical um, suitability of the wall. It seems to me the only issue is that the stairway is deviated. And again, I think we have paid a, a hefty price for that. So with that as background and context, we are here to ask for you to issue a permit for us to complete the wall as built. Mr. Welch, background from the town's perspective, please. Uh, the town's perspective, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, <clears throat> the applicant came to the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission with an, with an application that was subsequently approved by both boards. That was forwarded to the Board of Selectmen, and that application was approved along with the plans. Uh, a different wall was built, and I might add that it has no similarity to what's on this plan at all. Not at all. As a matter of fact, it's a concave plan instead of a straight wall. Just so point of order. I think you're going to need your experts up here. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. The, the two plans don't coincide at all. They're completely different. In any event, um, that went back to the Conservation Commission, is my understanding. <clears throat> it went back to the Planning Board, and you described the efforts that went there. It came back to the Board of Selectmen, and the Selectmen said no. That's where we stand at the moment. Uh, I've read your application uh, for this evening, the information that was sent in. I don't see a single plan. You're talking about modifying the plan that was built without a permit. And there's no plan to show how you're going to modify that. So I don't know, one, how we inspect it, or two, how we put it into our record base or assess it. Mr. Walsh, it's, it's, well, why don't you? It's not the plan. The description from what was in, what you, you sent in this plan plus a letter. We sent yes. in uh, three plans. Okay. There was a description that came with the plans of what was yes. going to be done. Correct. Okay? Yep. I don't see that on the plan. I don't see how you're going to modify the existing seawall because I don't see a plan of that seawall with the modifications expressed on it on the piece of paper. So I have no way of knowing. Basically, you're going to remove some rocks and put some other rocks in. That's what you're basically talking about. Okay. 
Okay. In, in layman's terms, all right? Rework it, yes. Right. You've got to rework the wall. And so just, you get down there and... May, may I, it's just a point of order because we're talking about a plan and then a delta from the plan. You're the engineer. Could you please explain for your client's benefit and our benefit what are those technical differences? Between what was built and what was on the original plan? Yes, the, 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 the center of gravity right now. What is, what is the problem? The... Uh, Microphone. Yeah. The major difference was the curved stairs coming down through the middle of this structure. Uh, it's got a side wall on it and it wraps around, does a curve down. And I believe the contractor thought that was a better approach because the waves then won't go running up the stairs as it would if it was a straight set of stairs. And I certainly agree with that. I understand that. Um, the, some of the stones that were used were really too small. Okay, and, and just for point of order, you are a, an engineer? Yes, I have a bachelor's degree in civil engineering, a master's degree in ocean engineering. Thank you very much. I specialize in doing waterfront projects. Thank you, sir. Okay, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. So th that's the difference we're talking a straight you know, versus a curved. That's the difference. Correct, and the, the reworking plan, the, the area that's hatched there is to rework that stone, get some bigger stone built into it, mm -hmm. um, get it more in compliance with what the original plan was. Uh, that includes the, you know, the, a portion of what was built was, was too steep, so it's a matter of reworking that stone. It probably would not entail taking it all out. Uh, it doesn't seem to make any sense to rip out what's there because then you're exposing the whole bank to the next storm that okay. comes along. I, ju I just wanted to get that clarification in because we're talking those two issues. Go ahead, Mr. Welch. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, my, my point is that, that you have this plan, which you now presented to us, okay? You have a plan uh, that was actually built of the, of the, of the uh, an as-built as plan of the of the particular piece of uh, real estate and the wall that you're talking about. I don't see any differences. I don't, I, there's nothing explained in these two plans to show where those changes are and what those changes will be. We have to, we're responsible to, one, ensure that this wall is built properly, two, that it has a permit, and three, that it gets properly assessed for taxes. We can't do that without a proper plan. This plan does not it's not as detailed as the original plan that was presented. That's the original, correct. This is the original plan. Originally approved plan, correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. It wasn't built, okay? And that was our concern because the board issued a permit to have that plan built. This plan or something similar to it was built. Yeah. The one you're proposing. Something similar to this was built. That's the curved correct. set of stairs in the middle of it and so on and so forth. Correct. That's Duncan Miller's plan to show the areas that he feels need to be reworked, okay. which is part of this proposal tonight. And, and, and I, I think with the original plan. I think that's great. It's just that you, you're not comparing the two and showing us where the exact changes are going to be. What I don't want to get into is when we have an inspection of this, that you send a contractor down and three hours later he pulls out a small truckload of rock and puts in some more rock and he's gone. And really, there's no material change to this. Well, Mr. Welch, Mr. Gasek is the one most interested in making this a very solid wall. It's protecting his property. So there is no interest in doing a, a half-hearted job here. There's no indication that a, a proper job will be done. You just don't come in with a set of plans that really is not explanatory of what you're changing versus what's there now. And, and expect us to approve that without some information. And you, you send a dialogue in, a written dialogue, of what you're going to do. And I have to tell you, it's about as vague as anything a sixth grader can come up with. Okay, it's just may, may, I, may, I, may I, as a, a point of order, um, and, and thank you for that uh, uh, brief. Uh, Selectman Woolsey, questions? I'd like to hear from Mr. Diener. Okay, well, let, let's, let's, let's speak to the issues that are already on the table. Well, I'd like to know why. Well, that's we're, we're talking right. Now, we're talking right now um, on the technical aspects of the wall and any deviation. Do you have any doubt? We can bring Mr. Dean and these okay. gentlemen. Thanks, come up to the board. Like to so you you have no questions for these gentlemen right now. I sat on the board that originally just approved the plan that was not built, and I agree <coughs> with the plan that was not built, and this is a mess. But I would like to hear of, for, of conservation's reasoning what we'll, they found was a we'll, problem. We'll, we'll bring Mr. Diener in in a moment. That's it. Okay. Mr. Griffin? No, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Bridal? I would like to hear from Mr. Diener, too. Sir? Yeah. Uh, 
I just I'm, I'm just a little confused. So I just want the, the original one wasn't built, and then you went back with the to the planning board with the with the change, mm. yes. and the planning board approved it. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to. Put okay, um, because yes, we had we were stuck. We, we once we we had this as built, so we had to go back to the beginning of the process, and so uh, conservation committee recommends against it. Planning board hears that, says we still approve it. But then we understand the select board is saying, no, you can't do it. So now we've got, we can't do anything. Mr. Bridal. But you went, you went to the back of the planning board after the wall was built, correct? Yes. We did, everything happened after we, <coughs> once we realized, once we were told how significant this deviation of stairway was, that brought us back to the beginning. So that's why we've been going back through the process. So I just have a follow-up? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so the planning board approved this Initial. Yes. N not they, the initial, they, no. They approved both. They approved the initial and the, the new one. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what I that's what I wanted. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. They approved it after it was built. Yes. No, no. Okay, let's 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 we're okay. we're, 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 we're Mr. Waddell, further questions right now. My question is the plan that you said is not a plan, Fred. Is that the one the planning board approved? Yes. The modification, okay. Second. Okay, thank you. Right. Let me have a, um, a parlay uh, on this. I'm, I'm looking at uh, this, and it's, this has uh, grown, um, grown some hair over the summer. Uh, congratulations. I saw Mr. Gasek when I was out the other day, and he was on his property. Your property is beautiful. Yeah, thank you. And let me say to, to, to you and, and, and property owners um, uh, that um, attempt to meet code. And, and build and increase the tax base and, and do wonderful jobs with your, your, your properties and that you hire uh, professional engineers who have their own liability insurance, who have professional liability insurance. I, I have a great degree of confidence in the private sector. I have a great degree of, pro of confidence in the risk management uh, transfer of risk that you have for your homeowner's policy that would go out and inspect that and they have a very high standard of compliance and if they deem it inappropriate, risk hazardous, dangerous, uh, you won't be able to secure uh, property and liability insurance there. And I don't believe that's the case. Uh, and uh, I, I think that on a property such as yours, that you pay a significant amount of taxes to the town of Hampton. And uh, we're thankful that you, you have the confidence in this town and in leadership and in your neighbors to, to come aboard. And so we appreciate you being here. And as I've reviewed this, this incident or this phenomenon that has grown here, um, you're, you're kind of set up for a catch-22 where it doesn't seem possible, and Mary Louise is agreeing with me, that you can comply because you're told that you have been approved, and then there's a subsequent letter um, on December 11, 2013, um, post an approval, uh, that says this, um, the selectmen can uh, add additional requirements, and, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There was an initial problem. The plan's been approved by the planning board. Uh, I have confidence in what you're doing. I have confidence in this engineer that's to your left, Mr. Gasek. And, and uh, I am at the point now, uh, you were delayed on a certificate of occupancy, that I'm sympathetic to uh, a spiral stair and a modification, and that our code enforcement and that our, our, our leadership uh, become sympathetic to that, and that we, we address that and move forward and not cause you um, an extraordinary expense when you've been approved by one board, another board says um, yes at one point to this plan that has been approved, and then the selectmen, uh, by virtue of this planning board letter, um, can um, add additional requirements requested and required by the Board of Selectmen for the issuance of a permit for your seawall. And so we can sit here as a board, not engineers, uh, not lawyers, and we can impose additional requirements on you. And I think that's a standard that's too steep, and I think that uh, none of us here are engineers. Uh, anybody on this board is, and, and I'm very sympathetic to your case going forward tonight. Now, uh, that's what I have to say on it. That's just my opinion, and, and I want to I wanna go to Mr. Griffin, Ms. Wolsey, and then Mr. Diener's coming up. Yes, sir. Um, and I want to say that, you know, I believe I was one of the ones that voted that you should have had your occupancy. At least that's how I remember it. But just so that the other board members here understand, part of the problem is, and I think it's all been corrected and everything, but certain things were done that were so 
not part of the plan, like there were electrical outlets uh, installed that evidently never really got installed, but they were put in there and things like that. So that left uh, a lack of confidence with, that this was being done the right way. When there were other things like that, and I believe that's all been taken care of. So okay. that's where I think a lot of confidence was left uh, lost for the future of this project. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson, you had a follow-on. You don't have to be an engineer to figure out that we are doing a, a number, uh, residents are doing a number of seawalls and revetments and replacements along the North Beach to try to protect their property. And if you see something like this happening and the residents can s turn around and say, well, they got away without building to the original planning board plan, so why can't I do it? And you're going to have a, a, um, an effect that I think is not proper for the town. Those seawalls are, are necessary and they need to be built according to whatever specifications there were and forget the creativity and the circular stairs and all the other stuff because if we start having a snowball effect, yeah, the other property owners would have every right to step up and say, hey, I can do it. They did it. I can do it. And I don't like that. Thank you. Um, Mr. Diener, your uh, attendance is requested. Would you mind standing at the podium, sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Um, let me refer to the plans as plan number one, plan number two, plan number three. Plan number one was the plan that was originally submitted that was approved by both the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. Plan number two was the as-built that was submitted after the wall was built. Um, the Conservation Commission did not recommend approval of that revetment. The Planning Board did go ahead and approve the issuance of a special permit, I believe with a proviso that the Board of Selectmen would also go along with that. Plan number three is the plan that was submitted today that deals with additional work that is being proposed for the revetment. The reason that the Conservation Commission did not recommend approval of plan number two, the as built was because it was so dramatically different from the wall that was ori originally proposed. Um, the stairs were curved. Along that curved stairway, you have a steep flush wall, a vertical wall. If you look at all the other revetments along the beach, you find they are huge boulders that are riprap, that, that are stuck in at, at odd angles, or they're almost a pyramid stepped type of wall. All those walls are built that way because that's designed to break up the wave action so that the sea stir, the ocean surges, will have less of an impact on those revetments and therefore on the properties up and behind them. So there's, all, and, and I'm not an engineer, I don't claim to be an engineer, um, but just based on everything else we've seen built all along that entire stretch, you don't see any that have flush vertical walls. Sort of leads me to believe that maybe having a flush vert vertical wall like that is not really the best way to build a seawall. As far as the argument about a curved stairway um, causing the water to rush up the stairs less quickly than a straight stairway, I think I told you the last time I was here that there was a storm that hit um, and I was at North Beach and I was driving up North Beach and as you know there, some of the stairways come up from the south, some come up from the north, it didn't matter. The water was rushing up those stairways that came from both directions and across Ocean Boulevard like it was shot from a gun. If you've got enough power behind those waves, it doesn't matter where your stairs are, whether your stairs are curved or straight. So I don't really see that as necessarily a benefit. Um, the other issue, and Mary Louise alluded to this, we as a conservation commission have worked very hard over a long period of time to get some properties in, in town, and, and this certainly doesn't apply to everybody, um, because for the most part we have very responsible property owners in town, but there had been for a long period of time a mindset that it was easier to ask for 
forgiveness than it was to ask for permission. And so anytime we see a situation like this, my greatest fear is that's going to start that process all over again. And that's going to be to the detriment of the town. My last point is, and, and Mr. Welsh alluded to this before, with the plan that was submitted today and the narrative that goes with it, I don't have any understanding at all what additional work is proposed for that revetment. I don't see it on the plan, the narrative, as Mr. Welsh. Uh, well said is vague enough that I really don't understand what they're going to do. I don't know what they have. So we can't go out and inspect that after they're done and say, yes, they did what they proposed to do, because I have no clue. Um, and that's part of our job, to look at projects once they're completed and say, yes, what was done is what was on the plan. We can't do that here because we simply don't have anywhere near enough information to be able to do that. Okay. Well, while you're here, um, uh, you mentioned that the plan, there isn't enough information to go. I would, I would request that the engineers address that point. Yeah, the, the, the reworking is uh, to put the cross-section of the revetment back to the way it was originally proposed. So the plan that Mr. Welch referred to earlier that he was happy with, this is simply demonstrating how we're going to get back to that cross-section. Okay. So there is the detail that they're happy with is, is before them. We're only showing how we're going to get back there. Okay. Does that address your concern? No. Not, not exactly because I don't know which part of the revetment they're referring to. I don't know if they're talking about the entire revetment or one side of the stairs or the other side Could of the stairs. Could you two please engage in a dialogue? And it, it's both sides of the stairs. I mean, it, it's the complete revetment needs to be brought back into compliance with the original plan with the exception of the stairs. Is there a way that you can show that on a plan? Yes. Here, can that that show plan it? shows the area that's going to be worked. Right. But I have no idea what work is going to be done in that area, and that plan doesn't show me that detail. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the cross section that we need to have there is the cross section that was on the original set of plans. And that, that was approved by everyone. Can you? One and a half to one slope with four to seven ton stone. Exactly. Okay. You know, I want to see the cross section out there to look just what was on the original plan. The only difference is the curved stairs versus the straight stairs. Um, I would like to see that in writing. Okay. I, I, uh, I, I, I it, but, but to answer your question, he's provided, he's an engineer in the state of New Hampshire. This is a Hampton taxpayer. I have a higher degree of trust and we can get, we can get the documentation from this team. This is my opinion. I'm just trying to bring this before it comes back to the board. They have said that they will adhere to the standard of the initial application. Is that correct? Correct. You restate what you just said, please. The, yeah, the, the cross-section that you'll see through that revetment is to take it back to what was on the original set of plans. Was that set of plans approved? Except. Yes. Okay. Except, so, except, except what? Let me, just, let me just go back to Mr. Diener, because Mr. Diener's the chair, and this is the engineer. With, with documentation subsequent to this meeting, that it will go back to compliance with that original? That, is that a measure of detail that satisfies you? Um, to be honest with you, Mr. Chairman, I would need to see the plan before I can answer that. Good for you. Okay. But it was his board that approved it, approved that original Conservation? Plan. I, I'm, I'm not arguing that point. You're presenting a new plan because it's, you're making some changes to an existing wall that was built differently than the original wall. I want to see the detail on exactly what those changes are and where they will be, and I'm not seeing that. Okay. And just, just for my... Uh, we, and, and, May I just yeah, one second, ahead, please, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> we require that of every applicant who comes to us, so okay. I'm not being inconsistent. Okay, and, and may I, uh, on this plan that we are told there will be strict adherence to that was approved by your board, was that plan also approved by the planning board? Yes. Okay. And All right. by this board. Thank you. That clears up that, and if you just stay right there, Selectman Wilson. Yeah, it clears up what? I just heard that they would build to the original plan except for the stairs. I'm not deaf. What do you mean, except for the stairs? That's a big except. Well, Ms. Woosley, that that's the issue. To to change the stairs, we basically have to rip the wall out and do it back. I and didn't build it. I understand. All I'm trying to understand is you're telling Mr. Diener that you're going to go according to the original plan, and the current stairway was not in the original plan. So I want some straight up front answers here. I want to know precisely and exactly what you're planning and building. And I don't think conservation, if I sat in conservation, I wouldn't approve anything until I could actually see the current plan that dovetails with the original plan that was approved. 
Well, I can tell you those plans were presented to the planning board that reviewed them in detail and approved them. Well, the planning board initially didn't approve, approved the initial concept that was not built, and I sat as the selectman representative on that planning board that approved the first document that was without the curved stairs. Right. And they, right? They, they that was the initial them. approval. Right. And now you're going to say that we're, you're going to go back to the initial, as far as I'm concerned, you're double talking to the Conservation Commission. You're going to, you're going to go ahead and set up the plan as approved, or as originally approved by the planning board, except for the circular stairs. Well, that's a big except. Well, Ms. Wilson, I'm not double talking uh -huh. anyone. What I've done is lay out the history of this, uh, of this project, and I've explained why the, 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 the curved stairs happened. And it's unfortunate that it did happen. My suggestion is by requiring us to rip it out, all you do is inflict a financial penalty to no benefit to the town. If everyone did this after they have a plan approved, we're in chaos. We can't do business that way, particularly in that area. I, I just, that. I just. But Ms. Wolsey, if anyone saw what we've been through due to this error, this, we, we are a shining example as to why you, you abide by the plans approved. The time, effort, and money that has yeah. gone into yes. to dealing with this error yeah. is significant. Mm -hmm. And we are, not, we are not representative of any easy path to anyone. Mm -hmm. Had we to do it all over again, believe me, we would have built that exactly as designed. Unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. And we, we are sorry it didn't happen that way. We're not here in a disrespectful fashion saying, well, we did it to prove it. We're very sorry it happened. It's cost us a lot of time and money. It's taking up your time. This is all very unfortunate. My suggestion, though, is that it doesn't benefit anyone to say, rip it out. At this juncture, a forgiveness, a error, whatever it was. It's not my property. I didn't see it being built. I have no idea where the error came in. But if we start approving errors ex post facto, that's going to have a spillover effect, and I agree with the chairman of the Conservation Commission. And if you're going to do a plan for him that's exactly like the original plan with the curved staircase, I throw my hands in the air. Okay. Any further questions or comments at this moment, Selectman Wilson? No. Okay. okay. Thank you, ma'am. No, 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 let me work the board. We'll bring in another lawyer in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. Um, I, you know, I would like to see this project go forward with the idea that if it's not built exactly the way it's supposed to from this point, if there's anything that's wrong from what we're told, that that will be the end of it and rip the whole thing out. That's how I feel about it. <clears throat> so are you in support of the, the, the stairway as it remains right now, the circular? Yeah, as long as they're going to do what they said. Uh, I do think that they made it hard for themselves when they put those electrical sockets in there and stuff like that, and it just looked like they were flipping their to the wind and that's where the problem began here and uh, we have these things come up all the time and they're usually very very simple this is the only one I've ever seen end up like this okay and, and who is and the a year after year thing. who is the rep to the planning board I am okay thank you sir sir quite frankly if um, I'm as you say when none of us are engineers um, I don't know whether a straight stairway or a curved stairway is better or worse. Um, if, if we had a plan that would tell us what was more in detail on, on what keeping that curved stairway, but what you were going to do, I think that would go a long way. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to penalize you by having to make you rip out a stairway. Uh, so I think if, if we could have a plan that stated a little bit better as to what what you were doing so that yes in fact you were taking it back to the original plan with the exception of the curved stairway and this is the work we're going to do to get to that I think that would go a long way well, that that's what has been stated I mean what, what I want to see as an engineer is I want to see that cross-section of that revetment look like the original plan yeah, that's what it was designed for and that's the way it should be to be resistant to storm waves so that has always been the proposal here, is to go back and rework these areas of revetment 
to bring them into compliance with the cross section from the original plan. Thank you, okay. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, I think a mistake was made. I think <clears throat> penalizing somebody for mistake is wrong. I think the planning board has more experience than I do on these matters. I think the engineer. I think it's unfortunate that there, that there's a conflict, but uh, it, you know, as, as long as it's a safe in the end, a safe, efficient wall. I'm not going to nitpick on details. Thank you. If, if I may, and um, again, this has grown uh, a significant amount of hair over the summer, and uh, it's, it seems to me there's a consensus that there was a plan that was approved, that Mr. Gasek's engineer has stated that that plan that was approved, they will adhere to that. And the planning board chairman, uh, if you would like to make a motion that's in support of that, that subsequent to that, I've got the floor, I've, I've, I've listened, and everyone's had ample opportunity, that this this work is approved subject to the prior approved plan and you can fill in the dots for the motion uh, if you would like to present that as the planning board member and you could help mr griffin with that motion uh, uh I'm, I'm happy to hear that at this point i think we've discussed it quite a bit yeah yeah i would like to make the motion but if there's anything that's not right i want them to understand that it's at their own um you know their own, like their own grave. Yeah, you just so the the the, 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 right. the the motion would be with that going back to that original plan that was approved and the cross section for the cross section from the original plan and then reworking the areas as shown on this third plan to bring it into compliance with the original with the exception of the stairs. Here okay, was there a second. I'll second it. All those in favor. Well, 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 we've not heard from council yet. Or do you want to hear? Uh, from we've we've council? heard we've we've heard from council, and for the record, uh, we've heard all summer, and I've got a boatload of research and study into this. Um, there's a motion on the board. Uh, is there a second? We've got second. the second. Okay. All I those object. all those in favor. The town council has asked to be heard. In it, four in favor. No, absolutely not. And that is a negative or a no. Uh, on the you vote. Want me to put more uh, adverbs? Negative. Before. No, uh, your adverbs are fine. Uh, the motion passes four to one. Thank you very much. Very good, sir. Roman five approval of minutes. Why are we paying council? September eleventh, two thousand fourteen. I want an answer. Why are we paying council? We have, we have, we have moved on past that issue. Well, maybe That's you the point of on, order. but I haven't moved on. Why are we paying council to sit here and then ask for recognition? I object to the, uh, how this meeting's not going on like it should be. So how should it be, okay. Mr. Griffin? P pardon me. Uh, we've got a motion, uh, or we've got uh, the minutes, September 11, 2014. A motion? I'll make the motion. Any amendments, That's additions, corrections? A second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Four. Selectman Woolsey. I'll abstain. Okay, thank you. Approval of minutes, uh, September 15, 2014. Motion. motion. All those in favor? All those in favor? Oh, sorry. Four. Selectman Woolsey. I'll abstain. Thank you, ma'am. Roman six, new business one, 2015 proposed warrant articles. Uh, Mr. Welch. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Second here until I get my small notebook out. I think I have all of them, but we've had a little pile. Got a small, gigantic pile. We have. Uh, I've got a uh, chunk here, Fred. I believe by count <laughs> there are 43 <laughs> drafts of war articles at this point. God love us. Uh, not including any petitioned articles that may come in. Um, they're there simply to give the boards the board options with regards to things that people have talked about during the year. Mm -hmm. Since these would be board articles, it is up to the board to either say they approve them and they want to see them move forward and be perfected <coughs> and put in the warrant, or they would like to see them removed from the warrant. And I did put in, um, of course, Article 1 is always the election of officers. I did put out in Articles 2 through 6 as Zoning Board Amendments. Um, there is a proposed bond issue that was submitted by the Department of Public Works, which would have to be Article 7 before the budget. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, the town budget, 
and the uh, CBAs for the fire and fire officers mm -hmm. following the town budget, and then all the rest of them are ranked in order of cost right. that was estimated. Uh, and there's a reason for that. That's the way the state judges things. If you get into a the 10% vote area, mm -hmm. it goes down progressively. So um, and you want the smaller items to fall off the end as, as opposed to the big items unless yeah. you don't want the big items. So the board really may, needs to go through the 41 articles at some point and make a decision on what articles you think you'd like to see appear. And then we can uh, start perfecting those articles and get them back to you in proper word and form. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. Could we ask the manager to start down the list so we can? We're going to have to do it sooner or later. At least we can we can throw a couple off or whatever we need to do. You'll have some boilerplate in there. Could you go one by one? Let me just say this: there's there's 43. That you have. Yeah, you just got rid of a chunk of them at the beginning. Okay. Of the I, I it, it it is it has been a busy week. It's been a challenging week, and Mr. Welch has just come back from vacation. Mr. Griffin has been elsewhere. Um, I have 41 Warren articles. In, in in all fairness, I have not researched these. I have a I have a position on adding employees, and I share that with you, Ms. Woolsey, that they're not to be added this way. But I haven't had a time to do this. If you'd like to address the notion of where these are, I would like to put this on the, the agenda for next week. You said you'd put it on the agenda it, for this it, week, it, and it's here. It, no, it, no, no, no. It's no, 12 I, I, after. Let, let, Don't give me that let, stuff. It's no, 12 after look, 8 look, p.m., look, and look. we have time to go through the articles. Look, here, here's, here's, here's how this goes, okay? Yes. Um, make the motion if you would like to go through these, um, all 43. And I don't have 43. I have 41. So if you'd like to make a motion, okay. please make I'd a motion. I'd like to have the manager just, if he would be kind enough to just go down his list reasonably quickly. I think we can dispose of... Uh, some uh, would you if would we you better get hung up we can would you, hold would you, those would you please week. make a motion if you'd like to do that I would move that we ask the manager to go down the list so we can at least weed out some of the articles that we think are not appropriate for the 2015 warrant okay thank you a second it's not rocket science. A second I'll give her a second a second all those in favor bless you two. all right that's what I want. two three I'll go with it four two. unanimous yes miss Woolsey Fred, would you just go to the next? Can article? I can I just ask Fred? Can, Sir, can you just give us a highlight on them, just so that we can. All, all I'm going to do. No, that's right. Only because I want to be able to hear what they all are. Right. And then if we can come back at another time and talk about, we're at least getting it out. I know okay. I have a list. Could I just say one thing? This is pretty much how we've always done it. Okay. There's some that we can just get rid of, and this isn't a night that we're going to sit here and beat them to death either. I think the board said that also. All right, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, sir. Yes. Article one is the election of officers. Is no, some no cool. Fred, pick up where you left off. Right. I will pick up at Article seven, which is the bond issue for Exeter Road reconstruction, including utilities, drainage, and sidewalks, at five million seven hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. We can't begin to tackle that tonight. That's something we need to. You know, yeah, that's, that's a big. That's a big yeah, talk right here. Yeah. Article eight is the budget. Article nine would be the, and Article ten would be the CBAs for the fire yeah. officers and firefighters. Yeah. Article number 11 is submitted by Public Works. Uh, it's West Side Sewer Replacements for Hobson, Johnson, Riverview, Fellows, and Harris at $1,145,000. Again, I think that's one that we're going to have to talk, talk about. about, about that. Yeah, it's a big director. one. Yeah. Article number 12 is purchase for new fire engine for $575,000. I'd say we leave that on. <laughs> well. No, well, you, we we need to get to replace the 1988 pumper. So I have a problem leaving that. Well, they're, they're all on for now. Well, Unless I'm you saying make a motion, and then you make a motion, well, and we vote it down. That will be the end of it. Okay. So, so would you rather see. wait and talk about it no, later? I, well, what are you going to talk about a 1988 confounded pumper? You got to replace it. <laughs> Listen, I don't drive pumpers. Leave it on there. Well, okay, point, point, point of order. As far yeah. as I'm concerned, leave the pumper article on. <laughs> okay, well, but, but we're, not, we're, uh, we're, not, we're not talking about adding or leaving. We're just going down the list and, and speaking, I no, think. No, I think if we want to pull some, we ought to do it now. Okay, well then, if, if you're going to. have sufficient information if, to do it. What's after the pumper, Fred? Okay, was there a motion on the pumper? No, well, why do you make a motion on the pumper? Leave it on the list and move on. I thought we were trying to weed the list. Uh, What's next, I, I'm not. <laughs> 
what you Please, want's going to work against you, from what I can say. Fred, go ahead. Article 13 would be the Department of Public Works Equipment purchases a three-quarter ton pickup with plow, a three-ton dump with plow, and two six-wheel dumps with plows, $365,000. And I think we need to review that with the Public Works Director and get that um, rolling stock list, because I'm still not happy with not purging the rolling stock. Article number 14 is Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund for $300,000 with Public Works request to remove $100,000 to pave Belmont, Fairfield, and Ruth. Okay, now that's one that I think that we could go along with, in my opinion. I, I think but it belongs it, in the budget. We've got to keep that okay, well that's, Fairfield We're talking be, about Warren articles right yes, now. So Fairfield should I make a motion asking that we do that? Okay, I'll make a motion that we include that as a Warren article. And I want to discuss it. There's no second at the moment. But what I want I'll to say is we should, we, should, we should have Fairfield reconstruction in the budget. And the purpose of that road article, the Road Capital Reserve Fund, was to build up enough money so that we could do major projects. And the prior boards of selectmen, who used to do it like they always did it, purged that. They sucked that Capital Reserve Fund dry, and we're trying to build it up again. I want to see the Capital Reserve Fund article on with the 300000 with no authority to withdraw. You need to think about that. We've only got 611000 in that fund. That's going to build you nothing. If we had been building that up, we'd have enough money or close to enough money to do the Exeter Road project. Yeah, and I understand that, but... Can, I, can I maybe help you on this one? Yes. Sure. Because two articles down is the Highway Block Grant Paving Fund for $200,000. We receive about $300,000 from the state of New Hampshire annually in the Highway Block Grant Fund. It's supposed to be used for main, maintenance of Class 5 highways. And the proposal here would be to take $100,000 of that and to do Fairfield, Belmont, and Ruth, and $100,000 to do other streets in town. That would come from state revenues. So we get rid of the Fairfield part of the that Warren article and just put the money in the Capital yeah. Reserve Fund, right? That's an option. I don't think we're accomplishing anything here. Uh, we're never going to accomplish anything okay, unless we well, sit and talk I, about I, it. I'm losing confidence in the, in this process right now. Well, that's it's, tough. It seems like What's it means the next nothing. one, Fred? Mr. Chair? Yeah. Article 15, three we new... never voted on that uh, no, first never. and second, no, uh, I may haven't. point out. And, 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 and quite frankly, um, can we hear the, the motion again and the second again, please? Well, uh, you're going to have to talk about it sometime. No, there's, there's, there's a motion. I mean, if we're going to wait and talk and have the people here that need to lead us the right way, that's one thing. But if we're here to make a decision, whether that can be a Warren article, I would just assume it be a Warren article than to be on the budget. Okay. Uh, as, as far as the second, I, I seconded it for discussion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once hearing that discussion, hearing what the town manager had to say about the, mm -hmm. the highway funds, yep. that does shed another light on it. So, like you, Mr. Griffin, I would like to hear from our department head no, and definitely. see how that would be. That's why we shouldn't be doing this now. We're just so, spinning our wheels. But at least we can hear what they are and we can move forward. So, okay. Mr. Welch? Article number 15, three new police officers, reinstate lieutenant's position, $215,056. Police Department. I will move that we leave that on, that we take that off the special warrant articles and insert the money in the police budget. I don't want to see government by warrant articles. There's a second on that motion? It was a two-part motion. One was to remove it from mm -hmm. the warrant article and then add... That. Well, let's do and what is what is the what is the price on that? Two fifteen. Two fifteen. Is that is that a full annual? No. No. Okay. What is the full annual on that? Uh, I can't tell you. I just got the the amount that would go on the warrant article. Does it include one. FICA? It includes everything. Yeah. Everything. Everything. New Hampshire retirement system. Everything. But we don't so have we don't. An, what an annual. So the the no. average voter. Eight months. So it's, this is thirty nine of, of the fifty two weeks. Okay. Yeah. All right. So is there a second on that motion? To withdraw it. Well, I will reconfigure my motion to withdraw that article. And I don't think any of this is funny. Uh, I, I will restate my motion to take the article out. And then okay. You, you, we'll you, are, you re, are you rescinding your motion on the police officers? No, I will make the motion to take the 
warrant article for the police positions off as a warrant article. I is, still think that should be in the budget. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries three to two. The addition. Oh, you did. I'm yes, sorry. The the motion, the warrant article for an addition of new police officers was removed from warrant consideration. Mr. Welch, please. Um, I already told you about Article 16, which is Highway Block Grant Paving yeah. Fund. Article 17, human service agencies. Uh, right now, or at least the time this was prepared, it was they stood at 161,651 dollars. Yeah. Because they keep changing as information comes in. We need to leave that on and clarify our guidance Bands. on existing charities. I think that's the next item on the on the agenda. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> article number 18 is townwide revaluation at $146,000. Excellent. We need that. Article 19 is the recreation fund, $129,981. There's no tax impact. Correct. There's a whole mm -hmm. page of material to go with that. Yeah, we leave that. Uh, Article 20, reinstate fire inspector position, $121,454 for 39 weeks. I move to pull that and, and insert it in the budget. Okay. But I'll move to pull it. Okay. Can you be, can you make a, an explicit, specific motion? I'll please? move to pull that warrant article. Okay. And what warrant article is that? 20. Okay. Number and, 20, and, reinstate 20. fire inspector. You're, is there a second on that? Can I get some? It's got to go, uh, in, I've, it's gotta I've, go in the budget. I've, I've made a, uh, I've seconded that motion. And uh, Mr. Bradley, you had comments? Uh, I believe it's already in the budget for this year, even though it's the, the not the default budget, but the, mm -hmm. the original, original budget. budget. Yeah. And I believe it's already in the fire chief's budget for, for coming up, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So it's already in the budget, so mm -hmm. not, not having to do it. Okay. So. so pull okay. it. So yeah. pull it, and it, it is it is in the budget for fire coming forward. Do we know that for a fact? Fred said yes. It's it's in the budget as a fire chief submission. Mm -hmm. okay. I do not recommend it, but it's in the budget. I as a fire I, chief I, I, I'm, I am, am adamantly opposed to that. Uh, and was your motion to include it in the budget? Selectman no, uh, my budget. My motion is to pull that article. Simply pull the article. I've seconded that motion. Any further discussion? Like I said, I have no problem pulling the article so long as mm -hmm. the fire chief already has it in his budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, all those in favor? Four, Mr. Griffin? I abstain. And an abstention. Thank you. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, Article 21, Update Master Drainage Plan, $100,000, submitted by Public Works. We need to talk about all the Public Works stuff when we get Keith in here. Uh, article number 22 is a separate warrant article for $100,000 to pay Belmont, Fairfield, and Ruth. Nope. So you got three That's combinations. Sure. I'll move to pull it. Pull it, pull it. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Bridal. Discussion? Does anybody know what that's about? Yes, it's the road that we, uh, we fixed the drainage on and two sewer. years ago. And it's yeah. still sewer sitting drains. there. Yeah. And it's, it, it's had a couple of years to pack down. Mm -hmm. It should be repaved. Yep. And right. so long as we have the money coming out of the ground, I have no mm -hmm. problem pulling this right. article so long yeah. as we use that money for that. Yeah, I, I know that it's, it's something that's very uh, upsetting to everyone that lives there, although right. we have it a whole to be many streets that are like that. But. So by supporting the motion, you advance the cause of the people that are living on those streets, perhaps? Is that correct? By supporting the motion, we... By supporting the motion, we, we t we've taken it off because we already know that we're going to use the money that we already have coming in the state. the state grant. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Mr. Welch. Article number 23, Energy and Safety Improvements to the Town Office is $100,000. That involves removing mm -hmm. those large windows mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that one being on. That pays back. It does. Yeah. It's, it's about a 12 to 15 year payback. But yeah. it's one Do you think that's the best place for it to be, or should it be in the budget? Um, it's really a special building addition. It's a, it's, it's a capital improvement to the building, so I think it probably belongs here as opposed to the budget. And while we're talking quickly on this article, I think we need to, we, we need to look at it like the school department does, and I mm -hmm. hate to pick on them because I am. Every year they have a $300,000 a year budget for maintaining our buildings yeah. right and I'd like to see us at some point look at that 
and doing the same with our buildings. Right. Because we have a history of buying buildings or yeah. building buildings and then waiting until they fall down before we repair them. Right. And I think we need to take a proactive approach yeah. to maintaining them so that we can keep our infrastructure up. Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Mike Edgar and our and Art Brady in the 80s. Yeah. Mr. Welch. Uh, Article 24, Mr. Chairman, uh, which represents two new DPW employees at $94,120. That's for 39 weeks. I put that aside until we see the director as well. And is that a motion? Well, no, I don't think you need a motion. Just let it sit there. We're not taking any action on it. Sitting wasting our time. Continuing. Mr. Article Welch. 25, reconstruction ice pond dam, $90,000. Ice Pond Dam? Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, <laughs> all right, the ice pond was only supposed to fill up in the winter. The dam was there. They, they put the boards in about this time of year and let the pond fill up with water so they could cut ice in the winter. There's no reason to have a dam there at all. It's Read that again, Fred. Reconstruction Ice Pond yeah. Dam, $90,000. Oh, I'm opposed to it, and the public can fight it out when they see it on the warrant. Mr. Welch. Article 26, <coughs> police forfeiture fund, $90,000, no tax impact. Yeah, boiler, pro, boiler plate. Right. Article 27, new park and recreation employee, $66,060. I'll move to take that off. Could you repeat the uh, warrant article again, please, Mr. Welch? Article 27, new park and recreation employee, $66,060. I second that motion. Any further discussion? Take it off. What, what, does that, does that it is that, in the budget. It's in the budget? It's in the park and recreation budget. Okay. It's already in the budget. Yes. Okay. There's a motion. There's a second. Any further discussion? No. no. See. Unanimous. Well, superfluous stuff. Article 28, remove pine trees, pine grove cemetery, $50,000, no tax impact. Yeah. Article 29, purchase animal control officers, replacement vehicle, $37,000. I have no problem with that one. Article number 30, Beach Fire Station traffic signal controls for Ashworth Avenue, $25,000. We can't find $25,000 in the police budget to do that. Uh, I object to having that in as an article. I really could, do. Could, I, I didn't hear that one. Can we just? I mean, or the fire budget, actually. Beach that Fire one. Station traffic controls for Ashworth Avenue, $25,000. That's ridiculous to put a $25,000 article on the wall. Mr. Welch. Article 31, recreation lease purchase a scarifier for the recreation department, $14,225. That should be in the budget. I'm Can't be. It's a lease purchase. It has to be, be in a warrant article it's by a statute. Lease, oh, lease purchase. Right. Okay. Thank you. Article 32, cemetery burial trust appropriation, $10,500. That's just an estimate of the cost number of people purchased graves this past year. And that has to be in, right? It does. Yeah. Uh, article number 33, conservation land acquisition fund, $10,000. I have no problem with that. Article number 34, we're anticipating the petition for the Christmas parade of $3,000. Yeah. $3, yeah. Article 35 is to uh, establish a town forest. Article 36, I, yeah. amend the noise ordinance. Article 37, to pay the cemetery uh, lot funds directly to the town trustees or trust funds. Article 38, abolish Heritage Commission. Article 39, amend taxi insurance requirements. Article 40, community center fund. That I would definitely pull. I will move to pull that. What was it again, please? I didn't hear the Establish thing. a fund for the community center. center. If that comes up again, I'm really going to have And there's a motion, Mary Louise. I'm moving to take it out. Second. I will say, well, let's wait for Rick to come back. I would just like on that, if we already have the, the recreation fund. Right. Fund. Yeah. Is there a reason why we couldn't use some of that money? You know how much it will cost to build a recreation center and staff it, Rusty? I'm not asking to staff it, but we need to at we least look at something down the road. So 
it, 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 no. could we have some sort of a, a planning and something come out of that fund? We can, but it would be extremely small. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, but I, yeah. we okay. have to start looking at it at well, some point. I still our seniors, our seniors need something. Yeah. That was the purpose of putting it in here was to at least begin the discussion of what to do. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now there's a motion. And There's a forward. second, and we, if we can just table that until Mr. Griffin returns to the table, can we move on to some things that perhaps aren't going well, to require done. motions? Yeah, we get a couple more. Article 41 is a withdrawal from the Solid Waste District. Excellent. Article 42 is to prepare GASP 34 and 45 accounting programs, and we may already have that taken care of. So. Good. And Article 43, additional street paving and construction in a construction article if we get there. We just don't know that yet. That wasn't terribly painful. That took about, what, 18 minutes? It's going to take longer than that. We're not done yet, Mary Louise. And once again, some of that is boilerplate. Oh, Fred, you had the town war, uh, war memorial. Okay, just can we wait for, for Rick to come back? And we've what got a motion. What happened to that on the list? We, we've got a motion in a yes. second. And could we uh, refresh that for Rick, please? Okay. Uh, the motion was to... Delete to the, remove the, yeah. the delete the warrant warrant article for the replacement of the ice pond dam. No, that was no. the one. No, no. Was, this no. A, uh, was it was a senior center. Senior, senior, senior center. center. Okay. You're getting to be a senior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I put my finger on here and slipped down to that <laughs> uh, You're still on Italy course, time, Fred. Fred. Yeah. Still article long. 40 That'd community center there. fund. Okay, and there's a mo motion to, Mary Delete. Louise, repeat your motion for Rick, please. To pull the article on the fun establishing a fund for senior center. The public's spoken about it twice already. It's going to be hugely expensive, and it's an extraneous article to put okay, on Okay, that's water. the motion. I've seconded it. Uh, all those in favor? Two in favor. All those opposed? Three are opposed, so it will be on the one. Yes, sir. And that's that's for right now too. It, right. This can change down the road. I mean, right. Before, yeah. yeah. Well. Before the end. What did we do with the traffic control for the fire station? We got to stick that in the fire budget. Twenty-five thousand. That's a ridiculous warrant article to have in there. Was anybody alive? Yeah. <laughs> did you make a motion? I made a motion, I thought, to, ki to kill that. Well, I don't know. No. Everybody's having a nap. Okay. Um, okay. I'll move to pull the 25000 for the for the traffic, whatever it is, and put it in the fire budget. Gee, um, whiskers. I would rather wait and see you until we talk to the fire chief on what he has for his budget. Okay. So that motion fails. Are we done with the list, Mr. Wells? We are done with the list, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, now, because um, we've we've got this on the agenda, I have uh, some commentary on perhaps a more uh, strategic level than this this list we just went through. Uh, are there comments on the Warren article? Selectman Wilson. I can only repeat that I want to see on any annual warrant only items that have to be voted on by the public. They elect us, they're trusting us to use our judgment, they assume that we have more insight than the average voter has into the needs of the town, and I'm hoping that we can keep the warrant down to something manageable. Any further comment? You're a sucker for punishment, aren't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you're all set? Well, for the time being. Okay. Um, Mr. Griffin. I'd like to decide what are my own assumptions and not what hers are. Okay. Mr. Bridal. I'm all set for right now. I'm all set. Okay, great. I, I had some, and, and this is what I'm about to say is more in line with uh, the flavor of uh, how I thought that agenda item was going to go. Um, but I, I wanted to offer these. As you tally up, and this is important for taxpayers uh, in this town. Uh, Expenses of running municipal platforms are increasing. And when you look and do a detailed research on the balance sheet or on the audit from 2013 last year, and you look at expenses, um, 
We have got uh, long-term liabilities from 2012, and like I said, this is going to last a little bit more than uh, 18 minutes, and, and this is what I had to say. Um, and I've said this before, and importantly, I, I would like taxpayers to listen because the Warren article numbers we just talked about, uh, that tax figure uh, for, for gross expenditures is over $8 million. And I just totaled it up on my, my calculator. And that includes removing the personnel that Mary Louise removed. So we're talking about an additional $8 million on those Warren articles. And I think that's the salient uh, takeaway on that. And I'm opposed to a number that's any larger than a small fraction of that in these times. And if you look at the Plosnick and Anderson 2013, uh, we don't comply with uh, GASPI. Uh, we haven't, and it's been years and years. We're, we're making that effort now. So we don't know the true cost of running our government. Uh, the long-term liabilities in 2012 were 17 million. In 2013, they jumped to 24.7 million. Um, we have uh, an unfunded compensated leave balance that we do not fund in this town. It is seven figures large and growing. It's over a million dollars. Uh, we, we haven't made any address to that. Uh, retirement contributions have risen 30 percent since 2011. It, it gets uglier and uglier as, as, as you look at the actual numbers on this. Uh, Ed Tinker put out and copied the entire board uh, this past week uh, revenue expenditures. And this is important information for the taxpayers, and hopefully it, it, it gets wide uh, publication. Uh, the next Terra uh, settlement has cost this town dearly, and, and it's cost us a lot of money. And for 2012, 2013, 2014, the Revenue increase for the town of Hampton for new construction and building permits um, is X. And when you factor in the abatements from BTLA and our agreements, in 2012, the town lost $248,042.96 to be exact. In 2013, we lost $284,149.69. And extrapolating for, for business procedures, including next tower this settlement year, we lost $143,854. So the town is moving backwards in revenue. It's moving backwards in revenue in terms of the last three years, $676,000. We've got dramatic increases in our statutory obligations, constitutionally protected, driven by the New Hampshire retirement system that does not answer to this Board of Selectmen, doesn't answer to the governor, doesn't answer to the legislature. Those expenditures are geometric and exponential in their increase. Our health insurance is as well. We've been required through our, our agreements with union negotiations with FIRE to set up uh, a health insurance committee, both the unions and the town. That hasn't been done. And then here we sit again tonight, and the Warren articles that are put forward here uh, not including the new employees, is pushing $8 million. And I, I surely must side with anybody that's concerned about taxes in this town and your ability to sustain your property. Um, that's, that's a lightning rod, and uh, I'm very concerned about it. I don't support anything more than a small fraction of that. Uh, we've looked at the public works uh, proposals on Exeter Road. There's under $2 million in actual construction costs. The state is, is doing 200 road projects this year. On the Exeter Road project that's on this Warren article, there's under $2 million in actual road construction costs, and we've got $3 million in engineering and consulting fees. And I want to say that again. For the actual pavement, the road that's going to be driven on in 2014, the price of that road is provided by the Public Works Director is $2 million. Engineering and studies and people that don't pick up a shovel on how to build a road in this day is substantially higher than the actual cost of the road. And I'm adamantly opposed to any approval of that. And as you go down the laundry list of this, um, we're challenged in terms of revenue, we're challenged in terms of our balance sheet, Gatsby's going to come on board, and it's not going to look good. And that was the essence of what I thought this, this discussion was going to be about tonight. And uh, the motions I did support were the ones that took new employees off of the warrant, and I don't support those. So I wanted to say that. Is there any further comment on that agenda item tonight? I have a quick comment, Mr. Yes, ma'am. 
You mentioned Gasby. I sat on the budget committee for years and pleaded for us to comply with the requirements and the recommendations of the auditors and board after board after board of selectmen ignored that and now we're reaping the benefits of that because people aren't planning. People aren't looking toward the future. People aren't willing to plan in the moment so they shovel it off to boards in the future. And now we're, we're reaping the benefits of that. In addition to that fact, <coughs> with the next era settlement, and we were lucky to be able to settle that, the state of New Hampshire and the legislature of the state of New Hampshire put in that pollution control legislation without all open-ended without any restrictions or any close date. And we got burned by that, once again, by the wonderful state of New Hampshire. So a lot of this stuff is out of our control, and we're doing the best we can, but we have got to plan. Today, by the by, and I don't know how many of you have looked at your town and city, excellent article in here on the capital improvement plan, how to really plan. So I gave Mrs. Olivier a copy of that and asked her to distribute it, please, to the planning board. Because instead of seeing little capital improvement plans that have been frozen in time with $75,000 trucks, we really need to plan. So I suggest that you take a look at your latest town and city. And this is worth the whole, the whole uh, book for that okay. article. It's very important. So planning, 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 planning. And with all due respect, shortchanging on personnel with risks to other personnel, particularly first responders, can come back to bite you. Thank you. Any further comments, Selectman Wilson? Not until we get to old business, Thank but you. I'm prepared to move the uh, procedure for. Uh, uh, just a, any further uh, comment on. 2015 proposed warrant articles. I would like to say that I feel very similar to the way you just, what you had to say. I'm pretty much in that camp myself. Okay, thank you, sir. And I'm going to be leaving right okay. now. Okay, uh, thanks for coming, Rick. Yeah. Really thank appreciate you. the effort. Do you need <laughs> assistance yeah, out? I'm fine. Okay, thank thanks you. so much. I think, uh, I'm not going to say I don't disagree with you. I think uh, $5, five million dollars for Exeter Road is a lot, mm -hmm. but I know We've done it a number of years ago when it needed to be done. Uh -huh. It would have been a lot less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, out of that that three million dollars, a lot of that I believe is going towards revamping the sewer and the drainage that's drainage. below that. Because drainage. if you don't take care of that, we're just going to spend good money after bad. Yeah. So um, I don't know if, if if the five million dollar is the correct out number. Uh, but we have to start planning and have to start doing something with our roads and more than just patching them every year. And that's all that's been up there for a number of years is patches. And if we don't start planning, we don't start taking care of our infrastructure, then we're just going to continue to chase that down the road. It'll fall apart. That's right. I think one of the things you need to think about, when the town originally, and I understand Hampton was one of the towns that volunteered to do this <coughs> in discussions on their uh, Article 230, 229, Section 5, where you have the compact roads put in. Um, originally, the state, in order to induce towns to have compact yeah. roads, that they would take care of their state highways, uh, had a provision in there that they would pay 20% of the annual maintenance cost and reconstruction <laughs> costs. And of course, what the legislature did is they simply amended the statute and took that away. Yeah. So if they become our roads, and we end up having to pay 100% of it, even though they're state highways. Yeah, and we can complain about that all we want. But, but it's we, fact. It's fact, right. right. But yep. if we don't spend the money on it, we're going to be driving on dirt roads here pretty soon. Well, and yeah. we're pretty close to that on Exeter Road at the moment. So, so yeah. I mean, we, we can blame the state all we want. No. And the drain. But it's a reality that. But the reality is we got to pay for it at some time or we're going to pay more yeah. the farther we get down the road. It needs to be fixed. And the drainage on the Exeter Road is a huge problem for the abutting property owners, especially the ones on the south side of the road. Okay, I'd like to see, are, are you yeah, also finished? Thank just you. wanted to get Mr. Waddell in here. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Mary Louise was stealing my time. That's all right, <laughs> I <don't Okay>. mind. <laughs> I agree with the chairman and I agree with Rusty and I, and I think we have to really, really be careful uh, with how we spend the money, but I think some money has to be spent, and I think we have yeah, to justify yes. what we're spending and how we're yeah. spending it. And I agree 100% on 
on the state and the state not take picking yeah. up their responsibility for especially mm -hmm. the retirement and and when the benefits get to be 60 percent mm -hmm. of hiring somebody or 67 yeah. percent then it becomes extremely difficult to add to positions that you need to add to yeah. correct so i mean there has to be some corrective measures taken and we have to really look at that and and, and everybody has to uh you know yeah. Tone down and, and get to be it worked on. Yeah. It has to be worked on. It has to be done. But there are people that have to be hired, and it has to be positions. It's just a tough, tough. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, our, our eight year, your eighteen minute assessment is probably blossomed closer to half an hour. But it was a good discussion. It was a little uh, wobbly, but we we managed through it. And seeing no more uh, comments on the proposed Warren articles, Romans six. New business number two, policy procedure for request for increase in funding by human service agencies. Sir. I didn't place it on here, but the board had made a decision not long ago that uh, as opposed to the prior policy where if a request came in for increases um, or for a new placement on, on the list, that uh, they had to submit a petition to warrant article and the board changed that so that we would put them on, but we would show the difference. Uh, what they're requesting or that there were a new request uh, and that's what we've been doing so far so we haven't been sending these back to the applicants if they've been increasing their costs mm -hmm. and some of them have been may I make a motion that I hope will be sensible I move for existing charities on the human services warrant article and that should have stayed in the budget as well by the by but they offloaded these items in the uh, past 10 years because they wanted the budget to look less. I would say that existing uh, human service agencies that want a different figure posted for them in that warrant article, submit it and this board will look at it and I would say we should just pass it on to the budget committee. Does that include they, new ones? That come no, 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 I said existing. Okay. Anybody existing under human services uh, on the annual warrant article should be able to send in a request to increase by whatever amount and then we can take a look at it and the budget committee can take a look at it. I don't have any problem with the existing uh, agencies doing that. Okay. Uh, for any new agency petitioning they should create a special money article for the public to take a look at. Because those agencies all got, got on there by initially submitting a warrant article and then they came in under human services in the budget and then a board of selectmen about 10 years ago allowed the manager to pull that out to save the appearance of spending a lot of money. You're going to have social service agencies and you're also saving, you're benefiting from those agencies because our welfare officer, and you notice the welfare expenditures have remained pretty stable. Our welfare officer is a genius at farming out different individuals to other public service agencies in the loop so that they get the service that they need by, by spreading out the uh, but assistance. One, to, to further that, once somebody has put a Warren article in, mm -hmm. a new Correct. social service, once they put that in mm -hmm. and it passes, yep. we insert them. Can we then insert that into yep. the list? That's what we've been doing we in the past. Okay. We should. I just want to make sure that people it's know It's cleaner. Yeah. Right. Correct. I think it's an easier way to do it. So is, is that part of your motion? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm a second I'll by Mr. Okay. Bridal. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 7, Old Business. Selectman Wilson. Yes, the Greenlands, uh, Ac uh, Acorn, uh, whatever, that little section where the poor woman can't walk her dog because they're all growling at her because it's private property. Do you have any um, enlightenment on that situation, Fred? Well, um, there's only one way to solve that problem, and that's to take that property that's in the road. Uh, and to make it a public highway. But in order to do that, you're going to have to pay damages. Well, can we not just, I thought we discussed sending a letter to the individuals who claim that they have a private road and say if you have a private road, no more town services. Well, the board can do that. Uh, I don't recall it, that we went quite that oh. far. But that was an option, I thought. It was an option. Um, we can't have the public threatened 
by it. Well, it's just, you know, poor lady walking her dog on a leash, and, and these big men are coming out growling <laughs> at her. It wasn't you. <laughs> that couple <of> you either. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, people should have the freedom to walk wherever they want to walk, and if someone has a private area legitimately, then it should be so posted legally, and they can, should understand that they are not... Uh, it does pose some problems for us, because if you go that route, yes. uh, there's no effective way of plowing that road at all. Because now what you do is you plow up from both ends and just leave a pile of snow in the middle of the road. Well, what are we going to do about the poor public? I mean, I don't think everybody is trampling through there, but what are you going to do about the occasional person who says, gee, I want to get out to Ocean Boulevard, I'm going to go down this street? What do they know, private uh, road? You, well, that's true. I mean, you can post the road, uh, that public way ends here, this is private property, uh, but in doing that, you can't provide any services to that portion of the road. I mean, I just think You can't it's plow through, you can't... Obviously, fire, police, and the ambulance can go through. Yeah. They go anywhere. Yeah. Well, if we have if we have an issue, or somebody has an issue with that, can we we put the neighbors on notice, the, the people on that street, that we've had an issue? Well, that's that would be my suggestion that, that that we've had a complaint, and this is the complaint, and this is if the town were to take action, this would be the, the action that was taken, mm -hmm. because it's the only action we can take. Mm -hmm. Right. But we'd rather not do that, mm -hmm. and it should be open for free public passage. Mm -hmm. Right. A letter to that effect, you yeah. think? We can free, do that. Yeah, you know, free public passage would be yeah. either walking or or, or driving. Or vehicle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, but especially people walking. I mean, really. I think we should put it in the positive, just simply because I don't think we should make a threat that we're not going to follow through on. So, I mean, if, if you know, I don't think we should say... I'm not saying take, we get a, a threat. No, but I think what we should say is, that, you know... That, that you're receiving public services, mm -hmm. we expect you to allow people to come through. Yeah. I think that would be a better way to put it initially, because yeah. if you start saying, you know, that, mm -hmm. that we're going to re, re, uh, remove something and then you don't do it, mm -hmm. you know, so I think, I think just, that's my feeling. You said you write the letter. That's yeah. very good. You did a good yeah. job. It's Thank not you. a problem. Yeah. Um, okay. Just some, some, so they understand that we are aware. But do we of know them. who the people are that uh, are? We doing know, we know who, who, who the association individual lots are that are on that street that are yeah. in the private. It's about area. six, I think. Yeah, there's three on either side. And they're posting their own signs. <clears throat> so, so I think there's a consensus that um, yeah. town management and leadership should take some, some role. Write a discreet letter to yeah. Yeah. abutters. Okay. Wonderful. And, for the um, old business select uh, music. And the, uh, I mentioned the North Beach problem, and that was Huckleberry and, and uh, back in that area, north of where Jim is, north of High Street, but and around Place Cove, and they were really, really upset, and, and they have a right to be. And uh, the Capital Improvement Plan, once again, when all of you have had a, an opportunity to read the article, Jim said he already did in mm. the town and city, we've got to get serious about the Capital Improvement Plan, and that's going along with what you said, Rusty. It, you've got to plan. You have Absolutely. got to plan and then try to stick to the plan. All set. Don't you hope. Don't you <laughs> <wish>. <laughs> okay, Silicon Woolsey's all set. Yes, sir. How are we on uh, negotiations with the fire department? Is that uh, there's been some extenuating uh, circumstances recently. Uh, we've had uh, 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 wonders passing. We've had issues this past week. Uh, I had been nominated to serve on that. Uh, I instructed Mr. Gerald to get in touch with Mr. Upton to say there would be some delay. And if you need further okay. explanation on that, um, it's become, uh, through nobody's fault, um, problematic okay. at this point. But it has been addressed. We're talking to legal counsel. Mr. Upton wants to come in here. I don't know about the other side or the, the union, as, as I should correctly say. But uh, it, it does have command attention. It has my attention. Um, and uh, we look forward to clearing a couple of hurdles, and then we're going to go and uh, sit good, down. Good question. Okay. What else you got? That's it. Okay. Um, I, I attended the uh, New Hampshire Municipal Association's legislative policy mm -hmm. uh, session last week, and uh, you know, I brought up the the cut, whatever we had concerns mm -hmm. with certain things, and all those went through sort Solution of in our control. way. Yes, they're going to push that. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the different towns, what they do is they take a voter in each one of them and, and then they they discuss well, 
then. That's right. And then they and then, and then they go that way. That the representative goes the way the board did it. But you know, I, I know there's a lot of controversy about the New Hampshire Municipal Association. But but the legislative policies yeah. that that you know can help us. That yeah. we can have them push for us. I think is a good positive. So I, I think it was worthwhile going, and I think we should continue. Good. Wonderful. Thank you. Appreciate it. You heading up there, Jim. Did it take you all day? No. It, it finished by about one, and they had some. Wonderful. Had some nice snacks, so yes. that was fun. <laughs> Thank you That's very fun. much. Uh, any further old business from the board? Okay, and I just have one with the uh, signing of the uh, next terror settlement agreement. I yes, would uh, like the um, Senator Stiles and uh, Representative Munns and Representative Cushing to come in here next week. Uh, look forward. I know that was on the legislative agenda. Um, and that has impacted us in a, in a very harsh way mm -hmm. and uh, look to uh, um, draft legislation so we can remove that that uh, um, open-ended that burden yeah. uh, post our agreement post completion of the agreement uh, that is a substantial amount of money and uh, I would uh, if, if there is a consensus to hear um, what Absolutely. they have to say in terms of the legislative mm -hmm. agenda yeah. and how we actually get in up in Concord and undo however this thing transpired yeah. uh, to to remove that from yeah. from our shoulders good so so we'll bring them on next week and if we yes, could sir. for those three yeah. that would be great um, any further old business yeah. okay uh, Roman a closing comments mr. Welch you're back uh, any any final comments from you is I know you're on Italy time still and you came uh. right in no, I'm not. I'm pretty sure after 22 hours of traveling, I'm no longer in Italy time. But <laughs> I can say, Mr. Chairman, that with some uh, some help from the United States Postal Service, we have the final, finally, the final signed plan with the, the JOP for the state. And I have made it a point to uh, communicate to um, a representative up there that we should start negotiations on next year's now. Ah. Okay. Uh. Fred, but, but wow. in public takes two, with the takes, state employees. It takes two parties. Yes. Anything else, sir? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. And the time being. Uh, Fred has sold his stock in the aircraft industry. Yes. 2050, a motion? I'll so we'll adjourn. Seconded by Ms. Woolsey. Well, All those in favor, unanimous. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice evening.